is Helena Finance the next Titano? Hey guys, this is Dumb Crypto here. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at Helena Finance. So this video is not sponsored or anything like that. This is my own. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like the video and please subscribe. We're going to do a giveaway at 100 subs. All the details will be, all the details about the giveaway will be in the comments down below. So Helena Finance came out around 11th of April. So it's quite a new project. And you can see from its website, it's quite a slick website. And the website is looking quite good. So if you scroll down, you can see that there is a lot of YouTubers actually covering uh, Helena Finance. So I would assume that a lot of these YouTubers are getting paid to do this promotion for this project. So if you scroll down, you can see that they have a chart giving the uh, comparisons between uh, Titano, Libero, Seifu. And I wouldn't put too much emphasis on these charts because obviously they want to make um, their token look a lot better by comparing things that they don't have. So yeah, so actually you can see like they have a DAO govern APY while the others doesn't have and random golden epochs. Then they have a impulsive burning hole which is burning the token, no minting on the contract. And then they have a instead of buying and selling bonds, they have a auction bond system, and then they have a lot of liquidity. So this we'll go through a bit more of this um later on in the video. So you can see they do have a lot of YouTubers um uh, talking about this particular project. So this project does have a lot of marketing in YouTube influencers, which is quite a good sign because um, if you've been following this channel for quite a while, a lot of these projects, I do believe is driven by momentum, how much new investors they can bring in through the YouTube influencers. So them focusing on YouTube influencers is a great sign for the marketing for this particular project. So the tokenomics and trade fees for Helena is 13% fees for the buy and 19% fees for the sell. So buy and sell fees are very typical in this space among its competitors as well. So then you can see here, right down here is the allocation for the fees. How do they allocate the fees in their project? So if you take a look at the overview for Helena Financial, it is a auto staking and um, compounding which is quite similar to the rest of the project where you just have to buy the token and hold it in your metamask wallet and the rebases will be automatically uh, compounded into your wallet you don't have to do any staking so this point is pretty similar to the other projects so the second thing is that um, this is the highest DAO governed APY on the Binance Smart Chain Network where it's offering up to 1 million percent APY but right now the APY has actually dropped to about half of it as you can see right here on the um, dashboard you can see that it's now it's like 500,000 percent APY but still I think one of the highest in the space right now compared to Titano Libero so this so it's actually half already but it's still quite high so you can take a look that they have this chart where they talk about how the APY will start to decrease so for the first 15 days, it's 1 million, which is already passed. So the next 15 days will be 500,000% APY. And then after that, it'll be 31 to 45 days, it'll drop to 250. And after 45 days, it will be um, going through a governance vote. If So if you look at the third point, they're going to have ultra fast rebases. So the rebases will be happening um, every eight hours, but they'll pay out the rebases reward every 15 minutes. So it's 96 times a day. So this is probably the fastest uh, auto staking protocol right now compared to the other competitors. So the next thing is they have a trust fund as well and this trust fund comes from 4 to 10% of all trading fees and they will be stored in this trust fund to help maintain the staking rewards by maintaining the price stability and reducing uh, significant downside for the token. And then these funds will also be supporting the new pools for the NFT that they're going to start up at the clubhouse. But this NFT and clubhouse, they do not have much info on it. I assume the info will, I assume the info will be coming up uh, later sometimes because you must remember this project is really, really new. So the next thing is that they're going to have auction bonds. So the difference here is that compared to other projects, the other projects are buying and selling. They, doesn't, they don't do an auction. So this one is relatively new and uh, innovative in this space right now. So fees generated from the auction bonds will be a source of income for the trust funds. And it will go back to the ecosystem for supporting the 
Helena token. So the next point is that they're going to have this uh, golden uh, random epochs where after the Genesis month ends. So Genesis month is the start of this project and after the, the, the starting period of the project is ending, they're going to have this program where there's going to be golden epochs and they're going to boost um, rewards up to 100% at random times. So it's quite good that they do have some things to keep people interested and checking the project and coming back to the project to check at their investment. So this is really interesting as well to keep people excited in their project. So the next thing is that they, they have an impulsive supply control. What it basically is, is that it's an impulsive burn hole. And if you read this thing, it's basically to sum it up, it's a burning uh, mechanism to reduce inflation of the token, which is quite standard and similar to its competitors like Titano, Libero, or even Sphere Finance. So the next point is that they're going to have this Nemesis network debt integration and revenue generating streams to create um, a utilization case or real world everyday utility for this um, Helena token. And then they'll be hosting um, NFT zone and Clubhouse. So if you click on the NFT and the Clubhouse parts, you can see that they don't have much info on it. So I would assume that they will update the NFT and the Helena Clubhouse uh, functions later sometime. So this overview of Helena actually makes the project quite interesting where they do have a couple of um, differentiating points of the project compared to its competitors. So if you take a look, they do have another comparison chart between Titano, Libero and others. Where you can see they do have basically a, a tick for a lot of these points and like i said this is just to make the project look really good when comparing to the others but obviously the others do have similar uh, functions but not specifically this uh, particular name so i wouldn't put too much emphasis on these uh, comparisons as well but they do have the highest ATY, which is pretty interesting of, across their competitors so the next thing we want to look at is uh, the price of Helena. What's the price action like? So you can see it started up quite nicely, ran up very strongly, and then start to drop. And then there's a slight price correction, and then it went down a little, and then now it's climbing back up with a nice uptrend. So I think the project is looking quite decent in terms of uh, the price action for the chart. And then you can scroll down, you can see that there's a lot of um, buy orders for the project. You can see. You can scroll down that they have all the buy and sell orders of this project. So you can see that there's quite a lot of buys as well. So if you go to the dashboard for Helena Finance, you can see that the cut this is the current price. The market cap, cap the market cap is uh, close to eight million, and the APY is five hundred thousand percent. So the in terms of the market cap, it's actually really really small. It's like eight million only compared to its competitors like um, the Euro Titan or Seifu and Spirit. Those are around the 100 million mark or more and Helena Finance is only 8 million. So in terms of market cap, this Helena do have way more room to grow if you compare to its competitors. So it makes it a very interesting project to consider as because this project is still very young and early. And then you can take a look at the other stats where they do have the amount for the liquidity pool is 2.5 million and then the amount burned which is about 4.8 million. And then back liquidity 100%. You can see that they do have all these stats um, lay out nicely. You don't have to go through digging them. So that's also a nice part about this particular project. Then the next thing is that you can play around with your calculator and you can enter in how much Helena if you bought the token and how much you can make in the future. So they do have a lot of these functions that are really nice to use and the website is very slick. So the next thing I want to talk about is the marketing for this project. So as I said in the beginning of the video, they, their marketing is really strong. They have a lot of YouTube influencers talking about this project. And all these, obviously all these YouTube influencers, they are getting paid to talk about this project. And I think it's quite a good sign for this project because they do need um, a lot of momentum from the YouTube community to drive this project up because I always believe that these projects are driven by momentum. So it's good that they are actually focusing on the right direction for the project. So if you take a look at the Genesis roadmap, which is the start of the project, you can see that in terms of develop, develop in terms of development, marketing, and listing, you can see that they got a lot of 
points already ticked and they are get, trying to get the certic audit as well. So that's also really good. And then you can see that for marketing, they have the first round of marketing, YouTube influencers and Twitter influencers on, on progress. So it's really good that they do have all these um, roadmap layout nicely and they are checking a lot of the, the points that they need to achieve. And then if you scroll down here, you can see that they do have like this whole list of proper social media. This is probably one of the most comprehensive social media links I've seen for any of the projects. I don't think I've seen more than five or six for any other project. So it's really good that they are kind of up to date with all this social media marketing stuff. So the next thing I want to talk about is the Discord of Helena Financial because usually you can um, access the Discord to determine whether how healthy or how strong needed the community is for the project because a lot of these projects not only they are driven by momentum the community backing it is also quite important because the community makes the project a lot stronger um, during the down times as well so you can see that they actually have been running quite a few contests in the beginning in the past few days and even last week they were running a lot of competition to try to gain uh, people to, in the Discord, trying to uh, put more promotion on Twitter as well. So all these are really good signs that the developers and project know that um, this project have to be marketed strongly in the YouTube community, Twitter, and they need the help of influencers to drive momentum to this project. So like I said before, this project was only an $8 million market cap. So it's definitely not... Um, unforeseeable this could actually even double or triple because of its low market cap but obviously with a low market cap comes a higher risk as well so there was one thing that I was a bit concerned with the discord for Helena Financial where I did ask a couple of questions um, about the project but not only I didn't get any response from any of the moderators or somebody in the community but they pretty much ignored some of the questions that I wanted answered and while this is not indicative of whether the project is bad or anything like that, but it does concern me that um, they could be avoiding questions, but I'm not particularly sure. Maybe it's just the time zone difference. I'm not too sure. So in terms of the Helena Finance Twitter, they do have a lot of followers, about 5,000 followers, and they're constantly doing the tweets for its project and trying to gain hype and momentum for its project. So on the Twitter front, it's also looking quite good. So overall, I think the project is fine like they're doing a lot of right things the price also is looking pretty decent on the uptrend but as you guys know i don't like to buy projects at a high price because obviously buying at a high price your risk goes way up and right now it's looking at quite a high price right now if if there's a slight pullback maybe you guys can if you got if there's a slight pullback if you guys are considering to enter the project it could be a possibility if you like the project but you need to remember that this is a relatively small project of 8 million market cap so you do have to weigh the risk as well because a smaller market cap means that the project is slightly riskier compared to the larger pro compared to its larger competitors like Titano, Libero, or even Seifu and Sphere Finance. O overall, there's only one slight negative point that my questions weren't answered on Discord, but overall the project is looking pretty decent. I definitely think one of the strongest points is that they're focusing a lot of attention on the YouTube influencers and social media. So I think the project in the in the upcoming months might get strong momentum but we will have to see how it goes so if you guys like the video please subscribe and please like the video all the details about the next giveaway will be in the comments down below thanks for watching